Hello everyone, my name is Heather, and in today's video, I'm answering another viewer question. A viewer asked me, do you recommend the Disney dining plan? The answer to that question is complicated. For my family, we found that the answer is no, it's not actually best for us. But whether or not it's best for your family is what we're gonna discuss in today's video. This channel is Heather Travels, where we make videos about all aspects of the travel experience. If that's something that interests you, I would really encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. First of all, let's talk about what is the Disney Dining Plan. The Disney Dining Plan is a program that they offer at Walt Disney World in Florida. There have been and maybe still are other meal type plans at other Disney parks throughout the world, but today I'm gonna to be focusing just on the Disney Dining Plan at Walt Disney World in Florida. The Disney Dining Plan was a very popular pay in advance program at Walt Disney World that was used until the parks closed down during the COVID-19 pandemic. Even after the parks reopened, they still didn't bring back the Disney Dining Plan until just recently. I think it came back late in 2023 or early in 2024. So we haven't even had the opportunity to try out the, the new versions that they're doing. Let me give you a little bit of background. Prior to the pandemic, there were three levels of the Disney Dining Plan. There was the standard or regular Disney Dining Plan. There was a kind of quick service Disney Dining Plan, which was gave you less and was less expensive. And there was a more expensive deluxe Disney Dining Plan. We actually had experience on a couple different trips using both the standard plan and the deluxe plan on one trip when we were staying at Yacht Club, we kind of went all out for that trip. So we have experience trying the Disney Dining Plan and we have experience both prior to the pandemic and since the pandemic going to the parks and just paying for all of our food out of pocket. I made another video and it was quite a while ago, but if I can find it, I'll link it up here for you. I went through all the numbers on a trip that we took in, I think it was 2019, so prior to the pandemic where we had the standard Disney dining plan. And when I went through the numbers, like I show in that video, I determined that the Disney dining plan did not make sense for us. Now that was a traveling party of three of us. I am a single mom with three kids. Two of them are adults in their twenties. And then I have one teenager yet. And at the time my kids were younger and my older son did not go with us. For the three of us, it didn't make sense. And what I kind of did is I used the price of the Disney dining plan as a budgeting guide for myself. So I know that if I spend less than what the Disney dining plan costs, I'm doing pretty good for food. It also helps me to kind of know how much money I need to have with me to pay for food if I'm gonna be paying out of pocket. It is a pretty good guide because the Disney dining plan is fairly accurate with cost, but it also kind of cushions it a little. So if you can eat for less than what the Disney dining plan costs, you're doing just fine. And that's what has, we've found to be true for us is that we don't spend as much money on food when we pay out of pocket as we would if we bought the Disney dining plan. Now, since the pandemic, they dropped the deluxe Disney dining plan. So they don't have that one anymore. So now you only have two options. You have the regular standard Disney dining plan, which gives you one table service meal per person per day, one quick service meal, so a counter service per person per day, and it's per night of your stay is how it's figured, one snack or non-alcoholic beverage. So like maybe you wanna get like some specialty non-alcoholic drink or something. And then you get a refillable resort mug, which are the refillable mugs that you can only refill at resorts. Now here's an important thing to note. You can only get the Disney dining plan if you book a full vacation package with Disney. You're staying on site at a Disney resort hotel and you get your Disney dining plan and your tickets all together. So if you're staying off site, you cannot buy the Disney dining plan. That's something important to know. And so since you're staying at a Disney hotel on site, that's why you're gonna get that refillable mug so that you can use it at your resort, basically. You can't refill the refillable mugs in the parks. A lot of people bring them along in the parks thinking that they're gonna be able to refill them. 
and you can't, and so they're carrying this mug around all day for no reason. You can always get free ice water in the parks, though. Any quick service restaurant, and also they just have them kind of sitting out sometimes, drink stations with these big coolers and cups. You can get free water in the parks. Don't ever buy bottled water in the parks. You don't need it. Don't spend the money on it. You can get free water all over the place in the parks. They don't want their guests getting dehydrated and passing out. <laughs> At the time that I'm filming this video, the price for the regular Disney dining plan is $94 a night for adults and $27 a night for kids. Now kids is only ages three to nine. So anybody 10 and over is paying the adult price. Children under three, so like babies to two year olds, are kind of expected that you either have your own food for them or they're eating off your plate. The other plan that Disney has now, post pandemic, is the quick service dining plan. The quick service dining plan only differs in one way in that instead of one table service meal per night, you get two quick service meals per night. So you get two quick service meals, one snack or a non-alcoholic beverage, and one refillable resort mug. Basically, the regular dining plan gives you one table service meal and one quick service meal a day. The quick service dining plan gives you two quick service meals a day. So if you don't care about ever having a sit-down meal at a table service restaurant, and you wanna save a significant amount of money, then the quick service dining plan might be a better choice for you. At the time of recording, the quick service dining plan is $57 per adult per night, and for kids is $24 per kid per night. To decide if the Disney dining plan is right for you, what a lot of experts will suggest is that you actually have to take the time to go through the restaurants you think you're gonna eat at and look at the menus and figure out what everybody was going to, is gonna eat and decide if you're gonna spend that much or not. Well, who wants to take the time to do that? That's kind of a pain. What I think is simpler, rather than having to go through and figure out everything you're gonna eat on every day of your trip, and even better than figuring out who the Disney dining plan is right for, is to tell you who I think the Disney dining plan is not right for, okay? Like who should not get it? We, and what I mean basically is my family, like me and my kids, have determined that it's not right for us and this is why. And I'm gonna add that there's gonna be one exception to this, which I will come to at the end. Here are the type of people who should not get the Disney dining plan. If you don't drink alcohol, it's not necessarily a good deal for you because I'm pretty sure that an alcoholic drink is included in the table service meal for the regular plan. The other thing would be if you don't eat meat or specifically red meat. Okay, so if you're um, a pescatarian, a vegetarian, or a vegan, I would not suggest the Disney dining plan for you because you're not going to eat meals that cost enough to make the Disney dining plan be worth it for you. If you don't eat dessert, dessert is included um, with the Disney dining plan. And so if you're not somebody who, you know, maybe you're on a special diet or you're trying to cut back on sugar or whatever, you may want to not get the Disney dining plan because it includes dessert with every meal. If you are a really light or picky eater, you're another person who probably might want to skip the Disney dining plan because you're probably not going to get your money's worth for each meal. So those are kind of the reasons that we don't get it because we don't drink alcohol, we don't eat a lot of meat, we're not strict vegetarians, but we really kind of eat like vegetarians most of the time. We do like our desserts though, so we don't fit in that category, but sometimes we can eat smaller portions and sometimes we can be kind of picky with our food. So for us, it doesn't make sense to get the Disney dining plan, because we don't get our money's worth that we would spend. Now, two things I wanna to add to that. If my oldest son, Andrew, was going on the trip with us, I might reconsider it. I am not sure if you can get the Disney dining plan for just certain people in your party. I will have to check on that, but if anybody knows, leave it in the comments. And the reason I say that is because it might make sense for Andrew and I say that because my oldest son, Andrew, does like to get like a steak and he does like to get like a glass of wine with dinner. 
So it might make more sense for him to get the Disney dining plan, but I don't think it would make sense for the rest of us. But if you have to get it for everybody in your party, then I still think, you know, three of us wouldn't need it and only one of us would. It still wouldn't make sense financially for me to get it for everybody. The other thing I will say is I'm not sure that the quick service dining plan might not work for us. But I probably would only try that if we were on like a shorter trip and we didn't want to take the time to have table service restaurants because we do really enjoy having table service meals as part of our day, each day, partly because it gives us a chance to get out of the heat and get in and sit down in air conditioning and also because it gives us a break off of our feet. So at Walt Disney World especially, we definitely do like having table service meals so then I would go back to, I don't think I'm going to spend enough to make the price of the regular or standard Disney dining plan worth it for our family. However, if they ever had the Disney dining plan at Disneyland, which they used to have something like this, I don't think they have it anymore. At Disneyland, we tend to eat almost exclusively counter service meals. They don't have as many table service restaurants at Disneyland, and so we don't eat much table service at Disneyland really at all. Disney World in Florida does have a lot of table service restaurants, lots of restaurants. It's actually kind of a foodie destination. So if you are going to get the regular Disney dining plan, you're going to be eating at table service restaurants. You know, that makes a difference. Now, what is the big thing that everybody likes about the Disney dining plan? It's that you are paying for all your food before your trip. So with the Disney dining plan, you are paying for your entire package, your hotel, your tickets, and your food for the whole trip. It's kind of an all-inclusive thing. And so you have everything paid for before you go, with a couple of important exceptions, which I'll come to in a second. And a lot of people really like that aspect of it. They like the fact that they know they've paid for everything, and so they don't have to worry about carrying money or a credit card or whatever to pay for stuff while they're there. That's the big thing that people really like about it, is they know they've paid for the whole thing in advance, and they don't have to sit there worrying, do I have enough money for this meal or whatever? Is this going to be too expensive kind of thing? However, with the regular Disney dining plan and that table service meal, there's one thing that isn't covered and that's the tip. Your gratuities are not included in the Disney dining plan. You're paying for your meal, which includes a main, your dessert, a drink thing, but it does not include the tip for your server. So you still need to leave a tip for your server with the table service meal. So you're going to have to have some way to pay for that. The other thing that kind of takes away from the all-inclusive aspect of it is you still probably need to have a credit card on file, which you would for your resort stay anyway, linked to your My Disney Experience to the app so that if you want to pay for things in a store with the app or you want to get Disney Genie Plus to skip the lines or you want to buy an individual lightning lane for a specific ride, then you're going to need to have money for that. So that kind of takes away of the all-inclusive experience. And then the last thing I would say is that if you're not staying on site, this whole discussion is irrelevant. You can't get the Disney dining plan unless you're staying on site in a Walt well, Disney World hotel. So if you're going to stay off site, this isn't even a topic that you can consider because you can't buy it if you're not staying on site. So I guess, would I recommend it for you? If you have a family that eats a lot, that likes their dessert, that, you know, is tending to get more expensive meals, you're staying on site, you were going to do that anyway probably, or you just really like the convenience of not having to figure out what you're doing to pay for meals when you're there, then I would recommend it. Some people will say they even prefer just the ease of having it paid for in advance, even if it means they paid more than they would have if they had paid out of pocket. For me, it's more important that I save the money because as I discussed in that earlier video, I saved hundreds of dollars by not getting the Disney dining plan. I would have paid much more for us to have the Disney dining plan than what I actually paid for food when we were on that trip. So those are the things you have to take into consideration. It is really nice to have it. On, I mean, the times I've had it, the convenience is nice. But in this day and age where I'm at financially and stuff, and it's more important to me to save the money and 
only be spending what the real cost of the food is, not just what the Disney dining plan estimated <laughs> it would cost for our family to eat. I hope this video helps you and answered some of your questions. If you have any other questions about traveling to Disney or the Disney dining plan, please leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer those for you. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day and safe travels. Thank you.